Wow, those front ball joints are dangerously bad. And my springs are about wore completely in two. So today we're gonna to be pulling the front axle out from under this truck. It's 35 years old, that's why. Completely wore out from one end to the other. We're gonna drop the axle, the springs, the shocks, all of the control linkages, every single piece of this front end is gonna be replaced today with a front axle that me and my dad recently built that is, no joke, a zero mile unit. And it will, it'll solve all my problems. Every one related to the front of this truck, drive line anyway. So let's get started doing that. I'm really excited. I cannot wait to get a tight front drive line up under this thing because this truck drove like garbage and that's not an exaggeration. So this should be fun. Thanks for watching. So driving this truck down the road closely resembled driving you know, my dad's old Super A formal in high gear on the road. It was not pleasant. Actually, scary. Scary, to be honest. If you've done that, you, you can relate. Now, that leaf spring is literally half as thick as what it should be from the factory, so hopefully, or luckily, we caught that before it uh, let loose on us. Now, dropping this front end should not be that hard because this thing has leaked so much oil. Hopefully, our leaf spring bushings, our bolts will come out smoothly. You know, we'll see. We got four of those. We got two bolts that hook our front sway bar up. We've got our pitman arm linkage. We've got two brake lines to snip off, basically, because they're falling apart. We've also got our sway bar linkage and the two bolts that hold the front shocks up at the top. So that's it, and this thing should roll. Oh, yep, we forgot about the old vent tube for the diff. It's gotta come loose as well. Luckily, the front drive shaft's already out, so. As long as we get all that stuff out, this should roll right out from under this truck. That's what I hope anyway. So in order for me to get the front end out from under this thing, I'm probably gonna have to pull the front wheels off. You know, the only other option is to jack this thing up super high. And to jack it up any higher than it is, I'll have to get taller jack stands than what I currently have. I'll show you my extra super heavy duty, brand new jack stands that I've never shown on the channel. Really nice, <clears throat> but I won't get under a vehicle with just a jack under it because I've seen them let loose. Brand new jacks and vehicles smack the ground. Seeing that firsthand, okay, I'm not getting under anything with just a jack under it. Although I will put a jack under here for backup, but let me show you my super heavy duty jack stands. They're pretty impressive. Better known as a dead walnut tree. So that'll work. I'm not going to put my body under there anyway, just because I can access everything from the wheel wells pretty much. So there we go. That's what we're going to be using to, uh, you know, get this front end out from under here. So I have to get my brand new cruiser unboxed here. Then we'll slot up under there. Man, that's a narrow creeper. Okay. Yeah, better than no creeper. Grab the impact. How long is this bolt? There we go. I think that got it. Yeah, that did it. Okay, the other one's on the outside. Mm. Are you going to give up now? Yeah. Yes. Yes, you are. Good choice. Okay, sway bar detached. To our advantage, this truck has leaked oil everywhere, except for on this bolt here. So, I'm hoping that those leaf spring bolts will come out without a huge fight. But I am prepared for battle. Is that the right size? Probably not. Nope. Okay. 
come up easy. on that. That means chances are the person who owned this truck before me or the other 10 probably never had this off because otherwise it probably wouldn't be there considering how everything else has worked out on this truck. Yeah. So check out these high performance shocks. I'm sure that uh, you know those are what contributed to the great ride quality of this truck. So our factory approved brake line clamp. And these brake lines are just, I mean, they're breaking all to pieces. So we'll be replacing those. See how good that steering stabilizer works? You can hear it trying to work, but it's leaked out most of its oil and does almost nothing. That one came out. Some of you may remember in the very beginning of this project, I said I was only going to replace the things that absolutely had to be, and I feel good that I've stuck to that. Okay, so quick story time, and I'm sure a lot of people are out there wondering why in the world would you fix a truck that is that worn out? And I'll hopefully explain that. So when I bought this truck, it was absolutely the cheapest local four-wheel drive truck that money could buy. I think I paid $1,100 for it, maybe a thousand bucks for it. That's as cheap as you're gonna get a four-wheel drive. I really don't care what shape they're in around here anyway. And I actually borrowed half of that money from my dad in order to buy it. So we were poor. So we got the truck that we could afford, basically. And uh, all I wanted was something to haul firewood around here locally with. And this thing has done that for the last 10 years. I haven't had a truck payment. Yes, I have put some repairs on this thing, quite a few actually, uh, in that 10 year period. But that would be nowhere near the expense that it would have been for a new truck payment over that time. And I wouldn't have been able to afford it anyway. So that's the reason why I own this truck. Now, the reason why I'm electing to fix it is because there's a huge aftermarket community of parts for this thing, and they're super cheap. Look them up. 85 Chevy half-ton four-wheel drive parts. You'll be surprised how cheap individual components are. Now, that said, individual components, yes, may be cheap, but if you buy a lot of cheap individual components, it adds up to quite a bit of money. And, you know, that's the thing. Although I won't have near as much money in this truck as most people think, you know, oh man, you're sinking a fortune in it. If you go out and look right now, here locally where I'm at anyway, trucks are ridiculously priced. And now they will, yes, come down in the future, hopefully. But as of now, they're crazy priced and you couldn't get one if you wanted one for a reasonable amount of money. For what it would cost me to buy some 15 year old pickup with 100 plus thousand miles on it, four wheel drive in halfway decent shape, I can fix this one from front to back and replace everything, almost. So that's why it just, just makes financial sense for me, seeing as I can do all of the work myself and save every bit of the labor, both mechanical and body work. You know, it makes sense. 
So that's why I'm fixing this. Plus, you know, got a little bit of sentimental attachment to this old truck. Diff vent unhooked. So driver's side disengaged. Get on there. So the other day in the mail, I received a brand new Powermaster 150 amp alternator for this thing. You know, from from a viewer, I'm sure. No message, no email, nothing. And I've received a few items that I haven't got any any you know connection with, and that I can't just personally say individually say thank you. But believe it, I appreciate that more than you can imagine. And when I seen that. You know, all the parts, really, that have showed up from people, it puts a huge smile on my face, knowing that people care enough to, you know, pitch in on something like this. So, thank you very much from all of us here. Much appreciated. going to be frozen solid when it's molten liquid or really close to that. So this front leaf spring bolt is just not wanting to play ball. Now, I tried the nice guy approach, it has not worked so far. You know, just turning it back and forth, tapping it with a hammer. By tapping, I mean a four pound, you know. Pretty heavy duty hammer, and I cannot get this thing to move. Off, it'll spin, but it won't come out. So we're gonna step up, you know, the aggression a bit, use the air hammer, and try to drive this thing out you know, here in the not so distant future, I need to invest myself into a good hard hitting air hammer. Nothing wrong with these Harbor Freight air hammers. In fact, I would say that they're absolutely awesome. At least my personal experience with them, because I bought two, this one and the one that I used for my scaler to tear down this wall when I rebuilt this shop and I'm still using them. They did all of that work. And they're like $12 a piece and I'm still using them. Ow. Hmm. It broke off and hit me in the leg. Really? Ugh, I think it's moving finally. Off camera I used, you know, my whole array of magic words already. So thankfully, this thing is coming out. <laughs> Whew, that one was pretty tough.
Ta-da. So there we go, half the battle, actually more than half the battle yeah. is over. The hardest part, getting some of these old crusty bolts out, you know, that, that probably took longer than what it's going to take to get this new front end under the truck because everything's pretty clean. So don't quote me on this, but I read an article not too long ago talking about the prices of pickup trucks then versus now, like when this truck was out. And I even talked to my dad about this and he was telling me that an average guy working a full-time job, you know, just an average job could afford a pickup truck, you know, back in the early 80s. And accounting for inflation, I think you could get in, start in, into one of these trucks, four wheel drive for around 15,000 bucks. That's what I read. Is it true? Mm, you know, I don't know, but it's probably close to that. So that amazes me. Take $15,000 to the dealership now and say, I want a four wheel drive truck. And they will probably laugh you right out of the dealership. And, uh, you know, I really think a lot of these manufacturers could, could really break into that lower middle class market where a lot of us are and offer a pickup truck like this with a little few little modern advances like airbags and maybe anti-lock brakes and just a few little items. No big, huge touch screen, no, you know, heated vibrating seats that remember, you know, your, the contours of your body and uh, self-adjusting steering wheels, none of that stuff. Stuff that you really don't need, it's nice, but you don't have to have in a modern, or in a, you know, in a work pickup truck. I think some of these manufacturers are really, you know, they're trying to be so cutting edge, I think that they're actually cutting out a large portion of the, of the population, like me. So, I don't know, what do you think? Would you buy one of these for fifteen, twenty thousand dollars $20,000? New? Man, I know, a lot of us would. So, some of us wouldn't, but you get the idea. It'd be nice if it was an option, but it's not. So because I'm going to be reusing my U-bolts, and I want to make sure that they're clean and I get a good torque on them, I've seen people reuse these and the threads be so dirty that they just can't, they really can't get them tight, or they think they do, and then they don't. So just chasing these down, they're 5 8 18. So just uh, running this down, cleaning them out, and that's it.
So before I take these old springs outside and throw them in the scrap pile, I want to give you a little visual of how badly worn they were. I said they were worn half and two, and I wasn't lying. And I want to, I want to show you. Also, I want to compare the new springs and the old springs so you know what we're put, the difference in between what we're taking out and what we're putting in. So see how badly worn the spring is right in that area there? Basically half worn in two. Now this, if it would have broke, wouldn't have caused me to shoot off the road, but it wouldn't have been good. And we'd have been starting to wear into this spring here, which is the one that retains the eye. So, you yeah, know, not good, pretty worn. So let's do a quick comparison of the old springs versus the new ones. So our new springs are five leaf, where our old ones are three, and our new ones are actually captured quite a bit better. These bands that hold the leaves together and in line are actually crimped and riveted on. So the old ones are just screwed on and they're not, cl not uh, clamped. So you can see that these get all out of line and these work loose. Just a better version spring, in my opinion, than the old style. So I'm going to throw these old ones outside and we'll shove these new ones up under the truck. Should, be a, should just be a better spring all the way around. under there anyway. So in order to keep the brakes from squealing on this thing and the brake pads from rattling around and making noise, I've always had pretty good luck just using some regular old RTV on the back of the brake pads. Just a little, where they make contact with the, uh, with the caliper. You know, good luck peeling them off, but you get the idea. A little bit of this, where they make contact, just keep them from vibrating and making all kinds of racket. There we go. Just kind of seals them, sticks them to the to the caliper, keeps them from shaking and going nuts. Well, why don't this thing just drain everywhere?
All right, so this will be the first time that this truck's ever sit on this brand new front end. Springs, bushings, all that stuff. There we go. So I can already tell this thing's sitting an inch or so higher. And that makes sense seeing as that we added two extra leafs on our springs, plus new springs and bushings, which you know, lifted this thing up a bit. And it's a little stiffer than it was before with shocks that actually work, you know, and all the new tight bushings. So I'm extremely excited to get this thing to a point to where it's a roller. And as far as the axles, front and back, this thing's finished. There's nothing else that needs to be done to this. They're as good as there will ever be. So obviously I've still got a ton of work to go to make this thing, you know, all like that, but you know, we're making good progress. Now, as far as the wheels go on this, I've had a lot of people comment, you know, Betty's going to put a set of wheels on it and all that. And to be honest, I'm not going to do that. I am going to clean up and paint these eight inch truck rallies. It's got a nice matching set on it. And to be honest, they're one of my favorite truck wheels. I am going to put a new set of beauty rings on it and a set of caps because those are like the, the bling on the wheels. But a fresh paint job and they'll look really good. I think they've always looked good, in my opinion, on all of these trucks. Now, what's next? Probably pull the radiator support in the engine because there's a lot of work that needs to be done to this side of the frame that'll be much easier to do with the engine out. I gotta fix the steering box and weld up the frame where it's cracked, on and on and on. Plus, I wanna be able to pressure wash under this thing so it'll be a lot easier to do with the engine and stuff out. I can get back inside of the frame rails and get it good and clean. And that's why I put the axles under this thing first is because I want to be able to roll it outside you know, when that time comes. So, you know, a lot left to go. As far as the motor, you know, we'll see. I've got plans, but you know, I'm also saving no matter which way I go, either fix this one or put a motor in it. It's going to be pretty expensive. One of those kind of stomp your wallet into the ground things, but it wouldn't, in my opinion, make any sense to fix all the stuff on this and then leave that crappy motor in here because it's really worn completely out and something's got to be done no matter which way I go. So I'm happy with the progress that I've made so far. I'm tired and uh, I'm about to call it a night. So that's it. Thanks for watching. Viewers, patrons, subscribers, anybody who's helped me out whatsoever, much appreciated. So that's it. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. The birds fly south as the light leaves your eyes. Hold on to your dream. Oh, I know you want to scream. Since the day you're born, you're just a flower on your own. Through the storm